We are behind the scenes today, December 6, 2016. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And wherever you're watching yes. around the world, we welcome you right here, beautiful Southern California. It was like super cold here today. It was like <laughs> 65. So we have a jacket on, the whole thing. My hands are cold. We <laughs> want to welcome our guest, Stu yes. Epperson Jr. Okay, Stu, welcome to Behind the Scenes. Thank you. Honored okay. to be here. Yeah. You're from North Carolina. Yes. Okay. And you're a radio guy. You're from a radio family. <laughs> Lori and I are kind of TV people. We're from a TV family. So uh, for those that are just watching, we're going to be talking about uh, several facets of Stu Epperson's life. But I want to start with kind of the let's 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 start with our parents. Okay. When I met you, you said what words to me? We are both. Sons of the pioneers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and and uh, so ultimately that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, your family, your uncle, your father founded what? Salem Communications. Okay, so Salem Communications for for those that uh, are radio types that listen to the radio in the car, those are all of the talk radio. Uh, a lot of that kind of, it's, you know, expanded a lot of different things. And so ultimately, uh, the fish is kind of what the branding name is. And behind the scenes of all of the fish radio and Salem broadcasting is the Epperson family. Okay. So then so you thank started. You yeah, for totally. That. I mean, Praise the Lord. how totally. many years have people forever been listening uh, to that network, it, Christian Radio Broadcasting? It's, it's the most dominant. Fabulous. Uh, you know, sure. f faith based radio presence in America. And then that then bred your uh, truth network. And you've got radio stations now in your home state of North Carolina, <laughs> God's country. That's right. And Iowa, I heard. Iowa, Salt Lake City, uh, Richmond, Virginia, there you go. Virginia area, yeah. and, you know, all across, you know, the Carolinas. And then we are, one of our latest stations is in the Myrtle Beach area. Oh. Right. Right on the edge there, so all the way to Myrtle Beach and then coming back into, you know, towards I Fayetteville. I heard Myrtle Beach Beautiful. that they might play a round or two of golf there. Oh, I, I, a lot I, of golf. I understand <laughs> that. A lot of golf, a lot of seafood. Yeah. And by the way, uh, prove to everyone that you're from North Carolina and say the word sweet tea. Sweet tea. Y'all <laughs> y'all come back for some more sweet tea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you proved it. it. Uh, we believe you now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, my daddy... Uh, being a son, I'm the son of a pioneer. Stu, you're the son of a pioneer. I think that sounds like a song, right? There is a group called the Sons of the Pioneers. Okay. Weren't they at Knott's Prairie Farm? Not the sure. Sons of the Pioneers? Bob yep. would know that. I, I think. <laughs> I think there was an attraction at Knott's Prairie Farm here. Do you know? Have you ever heard of Knott's oh, Prairie Farm? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Roy Rogers. Oh. Sons Roy of the Rogers. Pioneer. Oh, right. Roy Rogers. That's right. Okay. Son, my dad would be very upset with me right yes, now if, he, if I didn't know that <laughs> immediately. Sorry. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Okay, um, so Stu, your your daddy uh, and uncle, founders, pioneers, radio. You know, my dad was the owner of a radio station before TVN. Mm. So we're talking 60s, okay? So on Truth Network and your stations, now Stu Epperson Jr., your stations, what, what is your format on, on those channels? Mostly Christian teaching and talk. So a lot of the great communicators you, you, you watch on this network. Sure. Uh, preaching the Word of God faithfully, and then we have some Christian talk show hosts who get on there and mix it up and, and share the love of Christ through conversations, sometimes debates and things of that nature, but to challenge people to think, to know what they believe, why they believe it, and so on. You do a, tel a radio program, yes, okay, and what is the format of your radio program? My show is called Truth Talk Live, okay. and effectively it's, it's looking at the issues of the day, but from a biblical perspective. Okay. Do you have guests? All the time. Okay. Do your intro open like you're doing your radio show. Okay. Ready? Wait. <laughs> Three, two, one. Welcome to Truth Talk Live, and I am here with a leading TV mogul, <laughs> Matt, <laughs> and the first lady. <laughs> What's God doing in TV? Okay. Well, hey. How'd I do? Well, we yeah, heard of that, this great okay. guy that's written these amazing books. <laughs> that we need to talk about. His name is Stu Epperson. Do you Jr. really amp up that big or were you kind of role playing? Well, it's, you know what? You have to. It's, it's wherever God leads me. I've interviewed people on airplanes. I did, I did 14 programs in the Darfur region of Sudan. Wow. Where genocide victims were everywhere. Wow. And my heart, I even tender thinking about it right now. 
I did a, 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 with a with a missionary pilot who had seen things you couldn't believe going in. I interviewed him two show, shows in the air. I interviewed people that had taken care of these refugees, and it was just amazing. But it, it, we've got all that caught, but that's like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So wherever the Lord leads me, we want to just kind of tell the, tell the story, and we have other stations across the country that carry the show too that just want to want yeah. something. You know, people are looking for good news. That's why they the TV channel they, they they try to find something they can be picked up with and encouraged. Yeah. And your show specifically is called Truth Talk Live. Yes. Truth Talk Live. All right. And w so we've been your guest on Truth Talk Live. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> Look at that. That was awesome. Okay. Uh, well, you're on a show called Behind the Scenes. This is Trinity Broadcasting. Let me explain the set to you for a second. All of these logos that you see around, those are some of the uh, roughly 30 networks that we operate 24 hours a day. These are television. Uh, many, many, many different languages. I think we're up to about 13 different languages. I look over this one with the big A on it right here, Alpha. Uh, that one is in the language of Finnish. Uh, I couldn't remember. Uh, ATN is out of Tanzania. EJTV is the Enlace Juvenile. Uh, the logo that we can't read because it's in the Arabic language <laughs> with the little uh, kind of dove looking gold dove, that's the Al Horea uh, channel. That's Arabic. Oh. On and on. But we're here talking about not only uh, our pioneering fathers, uh, the fact that we're carrying on in their footsteps, we're, we're on their shoulders as it were. How did you go from everything that you're doing and what you're doing in radio and, and you know the Truth Network and the things that you do, your family and all that, uh, and how did you become an author? What, what, what was that switch over that happened one day for you? I just, I've been teaching the Word and been in ministry for just about all my life. And as I'm studying with some men in a small group, it's about Easter time, getting up to that. I'm thinking, what, you know, I'm asking, I'm praying, Lord, what do you want me to teach our Wednesdays in the Word, our guys that are, we're grinding through the Word together? And I started thinking about what were Jesus' last words from the cross? Mm -hmm. And I could, I knew a few of them, but I didn't know where they were found. I didn't know what was going on. But I knew there were a bunch of books written about them. I knew there were a lot of things, but I wanted something simple. Mm -hmm. And so, I started studying, and in that point, as I'm getting into it, as you study the words of Jesus, they start studying you. Yeah. Mm. And that really started just tearing me up in, in, in my heart, you know, the word of forgiveness, Father, forgive them, all these things. And so in the, right in the midst of that, the Lord said, make this a book. You've taught a lot of things. You've got like 100 books in your head. Put this in a book form so other people, whether it be a pastor or someone that's just on a journey checking out Jesus. Mm. You know, some people, hey, what are, the, what are the last words of Napoleon? What are the last words of a, of a famous military officer or president or head of state or athlete? And so uh, put it in a book that, that could be, make an impact. And so that's kind of how that book was born. Wow. That book that he's talking about, Last Words of Jesus, Stu Epperson, Jr., uh, First Steps into a Richer Life. Um, okay, what about writing this book changed you? Mm. What, what was the moment in time that uh, as you were studying this out, as you felt a mandate to do this, what was the big takeaway moment for you personally, Stu? Well, I would say that part about forgiveness. Really? Right out of the gate. You, know, wow. you, you think, this is not for the light of heart. You know, right after all the beating and the, and the torture and the Via De La Rosa, the crown of thorns on his head, he's, he's put up on that cross, he's been through a hell on earth already, cat of nine tails and all that, the first words out of his mouth, as blood flows from his wounds, forgiveness flows from his words. Mm. And I remember tucking the kids in bed one night, little cub, Faith, you know, our youngest in joy, and I lay in bed with them and I tell them the little stories we pray together. And we're praying, and I'm thinking about this person who really, like, has done a lot of hurt and harm to our family. And I'm in the middle of writing chapter one on forgiveness. And I literally had this, the, the girls are long asleep now. Mm -hmm. And I'm still laying there wrestling with the Lord. Lord, why? Why does this person hate us? What's going on? Why, why is he like that? What have we done? We've just served you. We've just loved you and, and, and shared Jesus with these people. And in that moment, the Lord just, the, the words I've been writing, Father, forgive them. God just broke through and convicted my heart and literally told me to picture that person at the foot of the cross. Wow. Wow. In that moment, just God changed my heart, and tears came, and I started praying for that person, and I started loving that person. Wow. And that's, that's just something that was just, but only at the cross. Mm -hmm. Like, I, started, I, I took my own medicine. You know, here I am wow. 
Lord, I'm writing a book about forgiveness for everybody else. And he's, he's dealing with me in a deep way. And it was really, it was really a, a change moment in my heart. Wow. Okay, so why did you have to, to pick on the hardest subject? Because that, that, <laughs> that could be a serious issue yeah. for a lot of people. Sure. I mean, seriously. And the idea mm -hmm. of forgiveness, you know, I, I remember uh, I had such a, a, a beautiful relationship with my father before he passed away in, in uh, November of 2013. And one of the uh, Dutch daddy kind of, Dutch uncle, Dutch daddy kind of talks that we had, and, and uh, fortunately my boys were sitting around, and it was just a, a number of days before he passed away, and I said something to him about forgiveness, you know, taking that subject. I didn't know what subject you were going to deal with, but I remember asking my dad, how do you know that you've forgiven somebody? Mm. Because it doesn't really feel like you do, you know? And, and, and my dad said something that, that really helped me, and I think it, it falls in line with what we're talking about here, is, is he said, it's often like when you accept Christ and you have understood, you, you were bought with a price, that you were separated from God by sin and that Jesus is that pathway back to God. And, you know, when you understand that and you accept Jesus, oftentimes you don't feel any. You do strange. it by faith. You do it by faith. You know, with confession, you know, uh, with, by faith, uh, you have been saved. You know, you have to speak it and you have to believe it. Ultimately, uh, but that is something that you do by faith. Well, forgiveness is really a choice, but you have to believe it by faith. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure that night wasn't the last night you wrestled with that situation. But um, look, the last words of Jesus... Um, uh, I know it's Christmas time, and I know it's December, uh, but we're about to get there. Just I just wanted to set up Stu as a uh, an author. Last words of Jesus. This is available now. I know it's December 6, 2016. It's coming up to Christmas. But why are why do you think that his last words are so significant? Well, it's a great question. You know, the, this is a, this is a real moment, and and there's there's so much written volumes and volumes about a lot of people's last words. So I think his last words were significant because he's significant. And so every time he opened his mouth, the Word of God was speaking God's Word. Yeah. And so there's just these sermons when you get into them, it's just, whew, it's just intense. Yeah. But it's just so, hey, you think about this time of year, a lot of folks get together and they say, well, you know, I love you, but I don't like you. We have all these dichotomies. <laughs> hey, if you're a brother in Christ, you're a sister in Christ, we may not just, you know, agree, of course, on, a lot, you know, on things, but why, why is there hate? Why do people hate each other that claim to be Christians? Mm. Mm. There's so much animosity in this forgiveness thing. Like, like, we have to ask ourselves, is this real? Like, you know, have I really been to that cross? Mm. Have I experienced His grace? And does that flow, you know, into others? And it, never, it manifests itself in our family, how we interact and how we, how we love others, you know, so the you, unlovely. So you broke down His last words into, like, seven Yes. different sermons. Which one was more su most surprising for you? Oh, my. Well, th they're all, you know, wonderful. The, the, the toughest one was number four. Which, which my one? God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Mm -hmm. Wow. Because yeah. that goes in the heart of pain. It's a mystery. You know, I re you read all these brilliant theologians with a lot more degrees past their name than I could ever even <laughs> dream of having. And when you read their commentary on that statement, which is found in two of the Gospels, St. Mark and St. Matthew, mm -hmm. And it's the only statement of Christ from the cross found in those two Gospels. The rest of them, three are in Luke, three are in St. John. When you read those guys' commentary about that fourth statement, and they say, I don't have a clue <laughs> what this means, because it's so mysterious. It's dark for three hours. Wow. See? So coming out of that darkness, Jesus makes this statement. The, the wrath of God is upon the sin of man. He's, bearing, he's the lamb being slain. He's a lamb of God taking away the sins of the world. He's the high priest going behind the veil, the great high priest, on our behalf. Yeah. I deserve to be there, and he's bearing my sin. And so that, that one really, that was the toughest chapter, actually, to write. And of course, all of them, it is finished is wonderful, because we get so much about what we do for him. That's really what, you know, so often we make the Christian faith formulaic. This is what I do for him. I do this. He does this. Mm. When in fact, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> hey, it's all done. It's what he did for it's us. Did yeah. for it us. is finished. Get off the treadmill yeah. Yeah. and live in grace, live in the, the freedom yeah. Come on now. of his finished work. So beautiful. beautiful. Last words of Jesus. Beautiful, beautiful. 
uh, forward by David Jeremiah. He's a beloved uh, yeah. TBN broadcaster. I'm sure yeah, he's on your care. broadcasting. And Stu Epperson Jr., Last Words of Jesus. Now, uh, I'm going to give it back to you, but I just want to show Save it real that quick. Place right there. Um, first words of Jesus. Now it's all coming uh, into fruition now. Oh. This is uh, holiday season, uh, Christmas season here, 2016. We're December 6th, Tuesday, December 6th. First words of Jesus. This is your second book. So this one was first. The, this one was first. The last words, then the first words. No, normally you would have done the first words first and then the last words, but it's okay that you did it backwards. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the way okay. God did it. <laughs> uh, from the cradle to the cross, Stu Epperson Jr. Uh, okay. What part? Do you want to read something first? Mm -hmm. Okay, read that. Okay. I have this. Yeah, you need your glasses. Yeah. I could read it for you. Where there is no cross, there can be no Christmas. Mm. Talk about that. Wow. Because everybody loves Christmas. Right. And everyone can kind of tolerate a baby Jesus. Right. But they don't want to tolerate a crucified Christ. Yeah. I wrote a poem called Give Me the Cradle, Not the Cross. Mm. Adore him as, as baby, but not as boss. Mm. And really, we like that cute, cuddly little baby. Hey, retailers, secular retailers will throw up a, a, a you know, little manger scene to ring in the prophets, right? But they don't want to talk about the gory man wow. on Calvary. And so, I, you know, that came full center to me as I was starting to listen to the, I've been, I've been hearing all these hymns of Christmas all my life, mm -hmm. right? Joy to the world, the Lord has come. But I started listening. As I'm finishing up my first book about the cross, which we just talked about, I grabbed this foreign object out of the, out of the pew of my church <laughs> called a hymnal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and because I'm hearing these words, I'm like, wait a second. I'm finishing a manuscript on the cross, you know, on what Jesus says he died on the cross, and they're singing songs about it, born to die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth, as far as the curse is found, yeah. to save us all from Satan's power while we were gone astray. I'm like, wait a second, you're talking about, you know, ransom Israel, I mean, you're talking about death and stuff, and it's, it's Jesus, baby Jesus, it's cute little baby Jesus time. And so I literally started crying, like tears are dripping down my eyes, licking the pages of this hymnal, as I'm just enraptured and just captivated mm -hmm. by how I'm seeing the cross in the cradle mm -hmm. and, and, and the, the, the whole reason why it came. And that's kind of how that, you know, book was born. And as God, like God told me that moment, he said, you know, he, he impressed on me very strongly, write a, a Christmas book that connects the cross to the cradle. Hey, there's a wow. cross connected to that cradle. Wow. wow. We're sitting with Stu Epperson, First Words of Jesus is his latest book. And by the way, if you just tuned in, Stu Epperson comes from a, a, a communications family, kind of like I do, and now you do, because <laughs> you're married to me yes. for 31 years. I love that. That's awesome. Part of um, the story. <laughs> so uh, we are the sons of the pioneers. Yes. Okay. So Epperson and Crouch. Hats off to those pioneers, too. Those are like. two kind of, you know, my dad was in radio before even TBN, and and uh, and so uh, the for those that just tuned in, uh, Stu Epperson, the name Epperson might ring a bell, his daddy and his uncle. What's your uncle's name? Uncle Ed, Ed Adzinger. Ed Adzinger, yep. that's right. Uh, uncle Ed and, uh, and Stu Epperson Sr., founded uh, Salem Communications, and that's radio stations all over, branded mainly as the fish. Uh, and so as you travel to Dallas, or there's a fish here in, in LA. In fact, uh, the fish here in LA, uh, I don't know what call sign it is, but, but your, your, your family owns uh, KRLA AM 870 and KKLA 99.5. My dad was the general manager of, of KKLA 99.5 back in the 60s. Okay, so uh, we, we are cut out of the same communication family cloth. Uh, so first words of Jesus. So that would have been in the temple when he was 12. That's right. Right? Okay. Luke chapter 2, verse 49. Okay, yes. okay. talk about start Start with, with start with yeah. this book, this, okay. this book and the words that, the last words of Jesus, first words of Jesus. Yes. And so make it clear in the first book, last words of Jesus, that they weren't his last words because we know he came out of that grave. Right. right. And he's coming again. Right, he's, right. And he is the same yesterday, today, forevermore. In the same fashion, first words, he likely spoke in, in, the, in, the, young, in the young couple's home in Egypt, you know, as they're refugees, you know. Sure. But these are his first recorded words, and they're so profound. He's in the temple, and 
you know, they're all in their big, you know, enclave of folks. Are, they're, go, they're, they're going to Passover to celebrate. He's 12 years old. So it's a big traffic jam in Jerusalem. Yes. Everyone's Locked come back on. for yes. a census and right. all that. Okay. That's right. Well, they're going in to celebrate Passover. And yeah. so they all head home, except uh, stepdad and mom realize they didn't leave their car keys <laughs> or their, or their, their chariot keys or their, you know, their, the uh, their coat keys. or their purse. They left their child, and not only their child, but they lost the one who came to save the lost. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we find out the story, we find out from Jesus' words that they were the ones lost, not him. Mm -hmm. And so basically those two questions, powerful. His first recorded words were two questions in that one verse, Luke 2.49. A lot of cool stuff before and after that, which I get into in the book in detail. But those two questions really focus us. First, why are you looking for me? The one who said, follow me, is saying, why are you following me? And then, and so why do we celebrate Christmas is kind of the question there. And then secondly, he says, don't you know that I must be about my father's business, hmm. which is a laser focused statement of his mission and why he came. And so basically the book kind of, all the figures of Christmas connect to those two. Why do they seek Jesus? Mm -hmm. And, you know, shepherds came to worship him. Man, the first, they were the first responders. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amazing. What, what were their names? Yeah. Don't know. We don't know. You know what's crazy? We don't know the names of the shepherds, okay? We don't know the names of the people that wrote the amazing song that we sing at Christmas, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Hmm. You know why? Because they were slaves under the oppression of slavery in early American history. Mm -hmm. And in their oppression, they were so overwhelmed by the coming Savior who came to redeem us mm -hmm. that they wrote the song and sang the song at the top of their lungs, even to their captors. Go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. So from nameless shepherds to nameless slaves, See, and then, so this, and then the, the wise men came to bow down and worship and to bring him gifts. You know, Herod came to kill him. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so they were all connected to, you know, why are you looking for me? They were all looking for him. And then secondly, they were all connected somehow to his mission, as are all of we. Yeah. See, and this time of year, of course, it's all year round. We always say that. It's the gift that keeps on giving at Christmas and all year round. <laughs> well, do we really mean it? Mm -hmm. Do we give out gifts to people in February? I mean, thank the Lord that he doesn't just give us his grace you know, okay, midnight yeah. on the 25th, 11.59, yeah. 59, you know, thank the Lord, His grace is always abounding to us yeah. in Christ. See, and that's the beauty of the gospel where God came into our mess. And I kind of get into it here, the kind of the rough, you know, manure-smelling, mm -hmm. saliva-encrusted, you know, cradle. It was rough. Mm -hmm. and, and so I kind of show that, that dark side for people to realize that what He did for us, how He came... Though he was rich, yet he became poor so that we might be rich. Beautiful. <laughs> Stu Epperson, Jr., uh, From the Cradle to the Cross, The First Words of Jesus. I love By the way, like this. Uh, Tuesday, December 6th, yep. uh, Merry Christmas, if you just tuned in. Uh, and say sweet tea again. Sweet tea. All right. I take mine with lemon, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Stu Epperson, Jr., founder, president of the Truth Network with radio stations across North Carolina, Central Iowa, like what parts of Iowa? Up in the Des Moines area. Des Moines. Up in that area, Ames and Boone. And she that whole lived area. in in My Ames. daddy pastored a church in Ames and, and was probably one of the first pastors with a campus church oh, how there in on America because he the... pastored in Ames and Des Moines at the same time. It's a 30, area. How 33, 34 years ago. Well, wow. and so she was an Iowa girl when For we met. <laughs> we had a long distance relationship. We were we met, and uh, she was living in. Were you living in Ames at the time? I lived in Ames or mm -hmm. Des Moines? Yeah, mm -hmm. Ames. How about that? And so you have radio stations there, Salt Lake City radio stations. Uh, you come from a radio family. The Salem Radio uh, World uh, is where the Epperson family is. The television world that I come from, Paul and Jan Crouch, my parents. His uh, daddy was named by Time Magazine the 25th most influential evangelical, yeah. right? Yeah, it's one of the that, 25 most, yeah. So amazing. that's uh, amazing. Okay, let me, let me, uh, I got to say one thing. We got a minute uh, or two left. I got to say one thing. Uh, December 6th, five days ago, our Polish yeah. language channel went on the air 24 hours a day. <laughs> So in this setting, in this time, in this set, we've got to add uh, a, another logo to this set. TBN Polska is now Polska. on the air, and it <laughs> was uh, playing out. Ooh. That was, uh, this video was shot 
uh, in Madrid, Spain. And that's our playout facility in Madrid. They have uh, translated our drive-through history, the Gospels uh, series, and put it into the Polish language channel. But this video footage that is being uh, played on the screen was shot in our facility, uh, playout facility in Madrid. And so uh, 24 hours a day in the Polish language. Uh, now on the air, that's uh, five days ago, uh, TBN's uh, 31st or 32nd uh, television network was born. Uh, and so uh, to those people that are watching around hello, the world, I know. Hello, Poland. Hello, Poland. <laughs> and uh, and so I know that uh, what an amazing day it is that, yes. that we uh, can just uh, start and uh, the story that we will tell of the first few meetings to the to the to to four to four or five days ago when that network went on the air, it was lightning speed. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, God was with them. It's an amazing story. It's just, it continues. It's it's an it amazing just, story of yeah. growth. Okay, Merry Christmas. Uh, we got just thirty seconds left. Your final thoughts, uh, author of First Words. And last words of Jesus, Stu Epperson, you get uh, Amazon, you get final you get thought. Well, you know, the, just the goal of these books is to touch people. This time of year, a lot of hearts are tender. There's a lot of pain. Yeah. We do a whole chapter on the darkness, the pain of, you know, you lost someone you love. And it's Christmas time. We may say Merry Christmas on the outside, but there's pain on the inside. So first words of Jesus, the, the heart there is that, you know, you know, I told people, I say, this book's not for you. It's to give someone. Yeah. Got it. As, as a blessing to bring them to Christ because that's what everyone's talking about anyway this time of year. Beautiful. Yeah. It is the first and the last words of Jesus. Stu Epperson, thank, thank you, my brother. You. Great to be Thanks here. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Wow. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Yes.